and um, these um, these folks know, are working on the engineering of um, products that are in um, production and in the field. And there's there's always what we call sustaining engineering, where you know a part number needs updating, or a part needs to be tweaked, or a supplier changes, and we're we're constantly um, keeping. Um, the bill of materials up to date and the, and the supply of parts and the design of those parts robust and there's there's a growing team doing that because as we make more bikes and have more models we need more sustaining engineers and we also have design engineers um, that are designing the next generation of products so right now about half of the Ulta team are engineers and that and that speaks a little bit to where we are in manufacturing and where we and where we are as a company right we're still we're still a lot heavier on the on the engineering design side than a big mature company would be that would have a lot more people assembling motorcycles because they'd be making more motorcycles. But we'll, we'll get there. This is this is somewhat interesting. Um, Costas here um, is is part of our field service engineering team. Um, so when when somebody calls with a warranty issue uh, for a bike, Costas is on the front line. Um, trying to figure out um, what happened. It frequently involves uh, downloading um, the data from that motorcycle and looking through that data to, to determine, um, you know, what what happened and what signals were were, were present when some kind of a fault happened, uh, and then turning that into some sort of a warranty claim or even even a a bug that of something that we fix in either firmware or hardware. Um, and he has kind of the whole electronic system of the motorcycle laid out on this cart. And it's kind of a mess. It's a bunch of chaos, but he's able to then look at look at a, a, a known working system as opposed to the, the, the bike out in the field and, and kind of learn more about solving those problems. Yeah. When like failed parts come back, I can swap in the bad part we think onto this and make sure that we know exactly what broke and and try to dive deeper into the issue and figure out exactly what we can do to solve the problem. Yeah. What kind of data does the Alta collect? The Alta collects um, a lot of data. Um, and this is, um, you know, this is something that every modern vehicle should have. Um, I think Alta is probably the only off-road motorcycle that has this capability. Um, we've got uh, a pretty big um, um, memory Capacity on the bike, and we're collecting really all the signals that go through the CAN bus. And so this is a this is a vehicle that has um, literally um, hundreds of, of different signals coming from from sensors and components and microcontrollers on this vehicle that that are giving status or user inputs like the throttle commands or temperature data or voltage data, um, you know, both in the battery and in the inverter and and, and, and all of the sort of safety logic and all of those signals are getting continuously saved so that um, we can go back, say, after a race and look at all the data and figure out how to make the bike go faster in the next race because we see we found some limits or something got hot or the rider was doing something that surprised us. Um, and then if we have a fault, we can also go back and, and try to recreate the situation or at least understand the situation that created that fault. So it's, it's a very, very powerful tool in making awesome motorcycles. We're gonna start actually at the coolest stuff that you can't film. So, um, ooh, this is gonna be a uh, uh, kind of a, a moment. And this is, this is a, a metrology lab which is a, um, a really fancy way of saying, you know, a quality lab or a place where things are measured. And we've got a bunch of really sophisticated measurement equipment in there because we bring in components um, from, um, from literally all over the world. We have, we have about 45% uh, of our bike is coming from U.S. suppliers, right, the individual parts. Um, we've got parts then coming from Europe, um, things like our suspension, our plastics. Then we've got parts coming from Japan. Um, I'll let you guess what parts come from Japan. And we have, we have the two parts coming from Taiwan. And all that stuff has to, has to come into this factory. Before it goes on the motorcycle, we've got to confirm that it checks out, that it conforms to our drawings and our designs. And, and 
And to do that, you've got to have some pretty sophisticated equipment and some skilled people to do that. We've got a, a computer controlled uh, device called a CMM that can, that can take the, the, the 3D CAD from a part into it. The operator can then design a program to check a bunch of different features on it, like bores or holes or heights or machining steps or whatever. And then you can clamp that down to, to that giant granite table in there. And then the machine will, will run an automated inspection sequence over a part and, and produce a report that gives um, the, um, uh, the compliance to the, to the, to the design, right? And, and so we're constantly doing things like that to make sure that our parts are on quality before we make bikes out of them. We develop um, new components for the motorcycle, uh, do prototypes uh, to build <coughs> manufacturing equipment and test fixtures. Right here on the floor is the example of a test fixture that's under construction right now. So we're building um, a new um, uh, fatigue testing and stiffness testing apparatus. It's upside down right now, but it's a giant heavy steel table that's gonna have a bunch of hydraulic actuators on it, and it's gonna abuse chassis till they fail, um, and it's also gonna measure the stiffness of parts. And so we do a lot of um, competitive analysis at Ulta. We look at, we look at competitors' bikes, and we measure how strong they are and how stiff they are. We look at our bikes, um, and we're, we're constantly trying to make better motorcycles and have a deeper understanding of what makes better motorcycles. And so this area is um, um, a, a test area where we do the validation of new parts against our design criteria, right? So that could be a strength test, that could be a, uh, a, 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 an aging test against temperature cycles, that could be a test for, for uh, on a vibe, vibe table. Um, and we, we have a lot of uh, a lot of investment in this, um, and then we have a lot of like really interesting specific to EV capabilities we developed around test. All right, now we're going to look at the line. Uh, nine stations in our manufacturing line. Um, we uh, we start out here on station one, and we have these rolling carts that the that the bikes roll down. We've got a few more ready for to put bikes on. And we start Station one with, with this, <coughs> this core piece. This piece is uh, is is one of these parts that does you know not one job. This part does this part does like 15 jobs in one part. And um, you know I like to I like to quote, quote John Britton, the guy who designed the Britton uh, uh, road racing bike, the super bike. That you know if a part doesn't do uh, two jobs. Right, you, you failed as a designer. Right, the part's got to do at least two jobs. This this does ten jobs. We've incorporated a lot of magic into this. So this is this is the main hub of the structure, the frame of the motorcycle. It is also the outer water jacket of the motor. It's the housing for the gear reduction. It's the housing for the motor control or the inverter, and the water jacket for the inverter. The 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 tail section of the motorcycle bolts to this, the swing arms bolts to this, the linkage or the dog bone bolts to this, the skid frame that is the, the sort of protection for the battery bolts to this. Um, here we go. Yeah, and, and of course the, the gear reduction output shaft on this side. And this is a uh, what's called a gravity casting or a, a permanent mold casting that <clears throat> was also designed to have all the critical machining done in one fixture and on a horizontal machining center. Um, so this is a part that um, sat on design desks for almost a year. There's a lot of effort went into to, to doing this. And the result is a lighter bike with the center of mass really in, the, in a great spot on the Ulta motocross bike. Um, if we had done all of these as individual parts, we would have been heavier, we would have cost more, and we would have had struggled to, to keep the center of mass in the right place. <laughs> We're gonna walk down the line. So this is a um, this is a great example of, of all time manufacturing process. This is <clears throat> this is all of the, the tools required for station one. This is what's known as a 5S organization of the equipment on the line. 
and by this is a, a Japanese uh, system that basically means you only have what you need um, and nothing else, right? So it, it creates an orderly place. It, it's, the, it's clearly figured out where everything goes. And you know, this is this is kind of the core of the culture of manufacturing here, right? That you're that you're being very precise about everything you're doing. You have all of the data. The work instructions come up on this on this tablet. Um, you have very good control of the things you're doing. We have another one of the wireless torque um, guns with the, with the bit tray that, that that sets the torque depending on what bit you pull up. Um, and and then we have of course operators that are that are trained to to, to do the, these steps. Um, here's here's a bike that has moved along from station one and. This bike has the, the motor installed in it. It's got the cooling hoses about ready to be connected. It's got the gear reduction in it. Um, and, and he's going to put on the, the front frame member. <coughs> this is Vaughn. He's, he's, uh, he's been working here for what, a year and a half? Yep. Year? About a year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. Out of the way. Mm -hmm. And so this is another uh, uh, ambitious, crazy part on the Ultra Redshift. This is what, what's known as the front bulkhead. This is a collection of forgings, right? So this this piece, it's it's near, uh, and these two pieces are are forged aluminum. That then get robot TIG welded together um, with some additional cross braces in there. And they've also got the cooling channel for the water cooling system built into them. So we sink the heat from the motor and the inverter into this frame. We don't have a radiator, we sink it into the frame. And, uh, and in our design and our calculations, that resulted in less mass. Right, so the and less mass and less complexity. Um, this this is a that's a hard part to make. Let me tell you, um, three phase uh, motor. And, and I'll hold it to the cover. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you talk about how the computer can talk to three phases? <clears throat> yeah. So <clears throat> we talked about the device called the inverter a little bit when we were in that other room, and so if you can imagine, you've got a battery. And then that's got cables going to an inverter. There's two cables going in there, the plus and minus of the DC battery, right? And then coming out of the inverter are three cables for the three-phase um, drive of the motor. And the inverter, um, through, through the magic of digital pulse width modulation, chops up that, that, that DC power into sinusoidal three-phase AC power got that. of different frequencies and think of frequency as rpm and speed and so and also voltage and and that's what drives this motor and so that inverter the software and the ability for it to so precisely control that motor is is really how the magic of the control that the electric bike has um, happens um, on the end of the of the motor is also another little device here that, that has a, um, a place where a cable plugs into it, and that's the position device. And so that's another thing we developed here at Alta Motors. It's a pretty high-tech little device that gives us uh, a very precise location for every rotation of that motor. And that's integral to the way that we then control it. Okay, so how many times per revolution do we get to tell the motor what to do? I don't want to actually say. Oh, okay, but secret. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say. I heard you get there. To, yeah, I don't so I guess the, the point that I like to make about that is that when we see more and more computers working with our gas bikes, we love gas bikes. All of us own gas bikes. Uh, they don't have as <coughs> many opportunities to influence what the motor's doing. Like if they chop the ignition, they retard the ignition, do yeah. different things. But we can interdict backwards or forwards uh, multiple times. Yeah, the four-stroke yeah. motor. And the ability to, you know, do traction control intervention on the gas bike, you know, it, it's done with the ignition, it's done with the, with the electronic fuel injection, but it's really still on this 
two revolutions cycle, right? Uh, on the on the electric bike, we're actually able to intervene um, uh, literally hundreds of times faster. And, and that and allows directly, and, and very directly. It's not we're not we're not retarding the ignition and getting this kind of muted slow response. We're getting a really direct fast response out of the out of the motor. It allows us to um, give you a really direct feeling for traction and power at the pump. He's uh, he's 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 building oil into it. Um, he's he's doing a leak test on the on the coolant system. He'll end up doing a leak test. On the on the oil cavity of the and, and the inverter cavity as well, and um, this is the, the the test part is this is a manufacturing test where we confirm that um, that the assembly process worked right that we didn't make a leaky seal that is going to let water go into uh, some place that it shouldn't. And when we talk about our bike being IP six seven six nine, which is um, you know basically water resistant to three, you know, te and tested to three feet underwater for 30 minutes without any water ingress into the whole system. You know, this is one of the ways that we ensure that that happens by actually testing the manufacturing steps. And just like in the, in the uh, electronics lab, we're pulling that data and associating it with the serial number or the end of the, of the motorcycle. And, and you know, that's just one more way that we know years from now that this bike left the factory excellent condition up to our standards. How much oil does it hold? Does not hold <laughs> much oil. Um, this bike uh, holds uh, 100 milliliters? 120 milliliters of, uh, of gear oil. Um, that you have to regularly regularly change every 1,000 hours. See right over here, um, and so actually the very final step is taking the dyno wheel off, doing a, a final inspection. He's got a whole a list of quality touch points that, that, it, that goes through at the end so your bike can line off. Um, and then once they're lined off, we start stacking them up here. And, uh, and then we, um, we put them over to our warehouse across the street and, and distribute them to our dealer network um, throughout America and soon into more international markets.